So I did say a few days ago that we would swing around to this topic and just go over some of the possibilities here. Because when it comes to the guys over on Sportsnet 650, Canuck Central, Satir Shaw, Dan Riccio, we had ourselves some very interesting segments over the past few days talking about the Vancouver Canucks and JT Miller. Now, I know, deja vu, we had literally this discussion a few days ago talking about the New Jersey Devils, and we even linked the same audio hit as well, but today's video was going over the other aspect of the conversation that was discussed on the radio that does not involve the New Jersey Devils. So, let's go over onto a recent hit done by Satir Shah, Irfan Gafar and the folks over on Sportsnet, because what they talked about on, when was this, June 1st, so four days ago, was the idea of not only the New Jersey Devils being involved in JT Miller, but a surprise sleeper team as well. Just to recap, in this audio hit, Irfan Gafar from the fourth period joins the show, and he says that there also could be a sleeper team involved in the Miller sweepstakes. He's agreeing with Satir Shah's prior suggestion that that might be the case. He then goes over and talks about New Jersey, which we already discussed in the previous video as well, and then Irfan Gafar says that he believes the Vancouver Canucks might just make an offer for JT Miller, like they might give him a contract offer, but they might do this with the idea in their minds that, okay, he's going to say no. We're just going to give him an offer just to say that we gave him an offer, and then he's going to go on his way, refuse it, and we can just trade him afterwards. It's all formalities at this point, is it not? Of course, Irfan Gafar is referring to a prior radio hit that Satir Shah also did, wherein he highlighted how there could be a sleeper team involved on Miller. This is the summary from Taj from May 31st. Sat mentioned a couple of times throughout the show that he wonders if there could be a sleeper team in for Miller. He was hinting at a team that was recently eliminated. Now, okay. We go back to May 31st, 2022, and we take a look at where the playoffs were, and the conference finals had just begun. So, we had ourselves four freshly eliminated teams, of course, some of them more recently eliminated than others, some in Game 7, some in Game 4. But today I wanted to talk about the four second-round playoff losers and discuss the idea of these teams going after JT Miller, because, oddly enough, it's not too out of the ordinary, in my opinion to have discussions about these teams in particular. So, let's go in chronological order and talk about which teams were eliminated first, starting out with the Florida Panthers, who had gotten eliminated by the Tampa Bay Lightning in four games. Heading into next season, the Panthers have $3.9 million in cap space, and the names they're going to have to resign are quite significant. I mean, okay, not the most significant, but there are quite a lot. You have Ito Lusterainen, he is an RFA. You have Noel Ashari, Claude Giroux, Maxim Mammon, Mason Marchment, that's a really big one right there, holy. Joe Thornton, Lucas Carlson, Ben Sherratt, Robert Haig, Pateri Lindbaum, and then you have Marcus Nudavara. Plus a few guys on your RFA AHL system like Alexei Habanyemi, German Ruptov, a few other players there. Of course, here, the big fish are Joe Thornton, which you're not going to re-sign, unfortunately. Claude Giroux, who, eh, I don't really know if he's going to be re-signing in Florida either. Mason Marchment, though, is one that I think the Florida Panthers are going to try to pull heaven and earth to try to keep. Because this guy exploded out of nowhere. He was an underrated Toronto Maple Leafs free agent signing from all those years ago, who really blossomed into his own this season, getting 47 points in 54 games. Now, he's 27 years old, coming off a sub $1 million deal, so if there's any time for Mason Marchman to get paid, it's now. But it's going to be difficult to do so with $3.9 million in cap space at your disposal. Who knows if the Panthers move out any of their two-plus million dollar defensemen? They've got Gudash, Forsling, Uyghur, Montour, and Ekblad all in that territory, but you still have to re-sign all the other guys too. Long story short, if the Panthers were to go out there and make a pitch for JT Miller, they would really need to go out there and do the 50% salary retained option if they wanted to make sure they're able to get this guy, because JT Miller, even though he's cheap at $5.6 million for a 99-point player, that's still $5.6 million for a team that has $3.9 million to re-sign some of their top players. Okay, maybe Mason Marchment wasn't a top player per se, but you get what I mean. 
You also have the, what will happen next? The Calgary Flames. Yes, okay, the Calgary Flames were the next team eliminated in the Stanley Cup playoffs. They got $26.9 million in cap space, but as it's been documented all season, they've got some pretty important names to re-sign. Johnny Gaudreau, Andrew Mangiapane, Matthew Kachuk, all are in need of new contracts, not to mention the fact that their recent trade deadline acquisition, Cali Yarncrow, is also in that position, as well as Ryan Carpenter, Brett Ritchie, Trevor Lewis, and more. Oliver Shillington needs a new contract. He played very well with Chris Tanev. Erica Branson needs a new contract, too. This guy kind of revived his career in Calgary, did he not? He started producing points. He started actually playing well defensively after having a reputation of not doing so in Vancouver. And, I mean, look, he got 17 points this season after having a career high of 13 points in 2015, so seven years ago. This was a career year for Erica Branson, and he honestly could demand a lot more than what he had been going for recently, which was around $1 million in the past. The Flames do still have Sean Monaghan. He's making $6.3 million. He's still on the IR, so that might provide the team with some cap relief in these contract negotiations, but with Andrew Mangiapane, Kachuk, and Johnny Gaudreau in their hands, I'm not too sure if the Calgary Flames are going to be able to go out there and actually make a significant push for JT Miller heading into the next season. Now, the reason I'm not too surprised about this conversation specifically is because we've had it before. We made a video a few months ago talking about the idea of JT Miller being targeted by, what was it, the Wild, the Flames, and was it the Bruins? I'm not really too sure, but I remember the Wild and the Flames were indeed there. So, when it comes to the Calgary discussion, it's not one that we haven't heard before. If they were to go out there and try to get JT, they would have to do the same thing the Florida would do. The 50% salary retained proposal because they just can't really afford to lose out on any dollars right now because they need to bring back some of their guys. Now, the possibility does exist that Johnny Gaudreau just says, screw it, you guys aren't offering me enough money. He's going to go to free agency, he's going to sign in Philadelphia, and the Flyers, or excuse me, the Flames, would have so much more cap space to burn. Who knows, if they lose out on one of their top stars, does that make them desperate for a player like JT Miller into forcing their hand to make a trade? I'm not sure. You can let me know in the comments if you think that is going to be the case. The St. Louis Blues then got eliminated by the Colorado Avalanche. They've got $9 million in cap space, and they only really have to re-sign a few guys. Tyler Bozak and David Perron are two important players, but they're not Johnny Gaudreau or Matthew Kachuk. You also have to re-sign Nick Letty, Nico Mikola, Scott Perunovic, and Vili Husso. Now, Husso is the big one that everybody is talking about as to whether or not he could be staying or going. All the Blues are are a few moves away from being able to re-sign everybody in a delightful fashion. However, it's going to be pretty difficult to decide which ones you're going to trade away because, I don't know if you've seen this, but the Blues have been a pretty good team the past few years, so who really knows who is expendable and who is not? That's going to be a conversation for another day. But if you assume Tyler Bozak does not re-sign because the guy's 36 years old, if you assume David Perron signs a contract that is somewhat lower than his market value would indicate, that would give the Blues just enough cap space to say, hey, okay, we could go out there, maybe trade another roster player for a JT Miller and just kind of translate the cap. Bearing the Ville Husso arguments, you probably do have a lot more of an easier job trading for JT Miller if you're St. Louis than if you're any of these other teams that we've discussed so far. That's not to say the Huso thing is completely insignificant, it's just there is a difference between talking about needing the money to re-sign forwards and needing the money to re-sign goaltenders. Then you go over to the last team that was eliminated in Game 7 by the New York Rangers. The Carolina Hurricanes got $19 million in cap space right now. With all the rumors going around that Martin Nechosh could be traded away because the guy just wasn't that great in the playoffs, that would relieve a significant amount of dollars on your cap for next season as he is an RFA. Now, we did discuss the entire Carolina cap situation at length a few videos ago when we talked about Yusperi Kotkaniemi and that entire thing. Long story short, the Carolina Hurricanes are in somewhat of a predicament. Kakanyemi could have been seen as the scapegoat for that happening this year, but there still is an opportunity, or a few opportunities actually, for this team to succeed in the long term. You've still got younger guys that are getting better. And who knows, with the departure of Jordan Stahl, next season is JT Miller a guy that the Hurricanes would want to go after and try to fill up that hole. He will be a lot more expensive, but there still is a good player profile there that I do think is a little comparable, but I would say that JT Miller plays with a bit more pace than Jordan Stahl does. Also, Jordan Stahl seems to be more engaged defensively 
which is not a knock on Miller. The guy had 99 points. It's just if you're a Canucks fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, long story short, with the cap space they need to re-sign Domi, Nita Ryder, Stepan Trocek, defenseman Tony D'Angelo, Ethan Bear, as well as Martin Nechash, who knows if the Canes are even going to be able to make a trade for JT Miller. But you know what I'm going to say right here? If they do, 50% salary retained, baby. Give us some more of those prospects they got, because I do love the Carolina prospect system, and I really want some of their guys to succeed, because they just happened to draft a lot of players that I liked from previous years. So if the Canucks can pry away a few of those, then I'd be pretty happy. Happy. What about you? Talk in the comments all your thoughts, though, about these four teams potentially being sleepers on Miller. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.